Hi there Honda owners, today in your 2020 Honda CRV, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the conscious vehicle wiring harness. And this is what our wiring looks like when it's installed. Now you're probably wondering, well, I don't see any wiring here. That's because this wiring is designed to live inside the vehicle. So it's completely hidden when not in use. You simply lift up your paneling here at the back and our wiring is stored underneath. All we simply do is just drape it down over the back. It'll be pinched between the weather stripping and that's going to hold it in place. It's not going to cause any damage to it. And this way you can kind of choose the length you need for your particular trailer. So we're just going to go ahead and set it there. The only thing you want to do is avoid the striker here in the middle as that could potentially damage the wiring. Now that we've got our wiring out here, we can plug it into our trailer and it's going to give us all the necessary lighting signals that will need to be DOT compliant in all states. That includes our left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps and brake lamps. This will ensure people behind you know your intentions when going down the road so you can have a safe journey. One of the things that I really like about this harness here though is that it's custom fit for this vehicle. It just plugs into an existing connector on the vehicle and that's basically it. There's a ground wire you hook up to a stud next to that and you're ready to go. And the harness does have a module that is built into it that's located behind our paneling. That module monitors the inputs and then produces signals that it sends out onto our four pole connector. What's nice about that is that if there's any faults on our trailer, the module has its own shutdown feature inside of it and it'll shut down that circuit. And in the event it's unable to, a fuse will just open and then you can just replace that fuse once you've made the repairs to your trailer. When you're done using your harness, it simply just stores here in the back of our vehicle. One of the things that I like to do with it is I like to use the dust cap on it that keeps out any dirt and debris to hold my wiring together. So kind of just wrap it up here. Once you've got a nice little bundle going, you can bring your dust cap around and then hook it onto itself and that keeps everything bundled up nice and neat for you. We can then just lift up our paneling and stick it next to our spare tire. And it's completely hidden now, so no one knows that it's even there. Now that we've gone over some of the features, why don't you follow along with me? Because we do have to take a couple of panels out to access that connector that we're gonna plug into. But it's not too bad and it'll be over before you know it. We'll begin our installation at the back of our vehicle with our lift gate open. We need to access the connector that we're going to plug our harness into and it's behind the panel over here. But there's a few things we're going to have to take out to be able to get this pulled back so we can access it. Take out your trays that you have back here. If you got a mat, take that out as well. The threshold here at the back is two pieces on this. This little middle one here we're going to take off first. It just pops up. We can just set it aside. Then the whole piece we're going to take off next to start on one side and just pop it up. We're going to pop up the opposite side. And then we're also just going to set this aside. We can now peel back our weather stripping. Just pull this off just so we can get it out of the way. And now we can start pulling our paneling out some. If you look here between our panels, you'll see where it's green. And that's actually the clips. We don't want to take off the lighter gray part here at the top first. We need to get the bottom panel here because you see it laps over it. But the, the green's a little easier to see, but that's where we're going to start popping these out is wherever we see those green because that's our pins. We also need to come on the inside here and there's going to be little push pins like this. They're a very strange push pin because they're a rubberized material. So you can actually kind of get your hands under it and you could just pull it up with your hands if you want, but the easier way to do it is to just get your fingernail under it so you can get your trim panel tool in there and then pop it up. There's one further back that you can remove as well. It doesn't necessarily have to, but it can make, uh, to give you a little bit just more room with your panel to work with. We'll also need to remove our hook here. This one, it, you just push in on it until you have it kind of like that. It's like the halfway position because here in the bottom now there's a slot that we can stick something in and there's a little white tab inside there and we're going to use our small flat bladed screwdriver to press in on the white tab once you push it on you'll kind of feel it a little kind of pop and then you can pull it out right there you can see the white tab a little bit better now and when you push it it releases the ears here at the back 
Now if we go a little bit towards the front where our handle is here, we'll pop out this as well. There's a small little tab here that you'll push down and then you can pull this out. That will reveal the screw behind it that we need to remove with a Phillips head screwdriver. And now with those further ones removed, our panel can pop out even further to give us more clearance back there. You will have to push it slightly towards the front of the vehicle so you can clear the little hook that's down here at the bottom. But now we've got plenty of room to get behind this panel here. We're not taking it all the way out. We're just gonna be pulling out about that far, but now we can easily get our hand in there to work. The gray panel now, we can also pop these pins out so we can get in there to access our connector. This is behind the lighter gray panel, and you can see back there, there is our connector there. It's wrapped up with the kind of brownish or pinkish colored tape around it. We can just reach in there and just pull that off, and then that's gonna be the connector we're gonna plug into. I wanted to show you this because when I put my hand in there, you're not gonna be able to see my with around my arm. So I'm just reaching in here, and I'm just gonna pull that connector off of the tape. If you're really struggling with it, you can cut it, but it's pretty tight in here. So if you can, just get your finger behind it and then you can pull that connector out of there. We just need to pull it to where we can access to plug it in. So I've got it there. Now it is still pretty tight getting in there. So if you want a little bit more clearance, you can remove this panel here at the top as well. This just pulls down. So just get, work your hands in there. And it's kind of just like the uh, threshold across the back. So we just work that across and that'll let us pull this panel out a little bit further, just so it'll make things a little bit easier. If you have any of the pins that stay like this one here, you'll wanna make sure that you pop these off and put them back in your paneling. So now we can take our harness here, we're gonna plug it into the connector, just match those two up. And then we'll need to connect the ground wire there is a ground stud right back in here. It's pretty difficult to get to, but if you use an extension with a swivel, you should be able to do it, or you could just reach in here with a really tiny ratchet and do it by hand. We're using a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolt. Once you've got the bolt removed, you'll want to take that ground wire that was coming off of our module here. We're gonna slide that bolt through the ring terminal that's on it. And then we're just gonna reinstall it. Make sure that the wires that were underneath this bolt gets reinstalled as well. We can then tighten that down once we've got it started by hand. Now that we've got everything plugged in and grounded, our harness does work. So I highly recommend testing it out at this point before we put all our panels back together. You can get a tester like this here at eTrailer.com. I recommend using a tester over plugging it into your trailer, just in case there was any damage that may be occurring on the wiring on your trailer. It doesn't um, give us false information that our harness isn't working. So we plug our tester in and we wanna make sure we've got our tail lights, our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and our brake lights. With everything working properly, we're gonna finish getting it mounted up and then we can reinstall our panels in the reverse order. Now, if you want to test out your harness and it wasn't working, there's a good chance that you just need to put a fuse in. Fuse 37 here, it's a 15 amp fuse, may or may not be installed from the factory on your vehicle. If it's not, there is one that comes provided with your kit, you just wanna slide it into that number 37 slot there. Then you can recheck your wiring, but in most cases, you're probably gonna have this. We can now go ahead and mount our module. And we're just gonna be mounting it here behind our paneling. You can put it in this here, you know, just anywhere where there's an open slot. We're gonna probably just put ours right in this opening there. We're gonna use the double-sided tape that comes included with our module. We're gonna stick it on the back side, And then we can peel off the other side and stick it into our paneling. 
Before fixing it, it is a good idea to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to clean the area, just to make sure you get good adhesion. Just kind of tuck those in. And we can now start routing our wiring here towards the center of the vehicle. So we're just gonna pull this off. I'm gonna wrap this guy down. And it's just going to rest in our compartment here at the back. That's where our, your connector is going to live full time. At this point now, we can just start reinstalling our paneling in reverse order of how we removed them. And now with all of our panels back in, we're ready to load up our trailer and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Taconscious Vehicle Wiring Harness on our 2020 Honda CRV.